communicating with colleagues during service. After the pre-service meeting, you are armed with all the information you need for service. Now we're going to look at communicating with your colleagues during service. The main points we'll look at are verbal communication with colleagues, non-verbal communication with colleagues, and communicating with the kitchen. Let's start with verbal communication with colleagues. Verbal communication simply refers to communicating using words, the things you say to others. There is an important difference here between guest communication and communication with colleagues. When we communicate with guests, we use more descriptive language. For example, describing the dishes we'll be serving them. On the other hand, when we communicate with colleagues during service, we want to keep words to a minimum. Messages should be short, quiet and to the point. To help do this, start your sentence with a verb. That is an action word such as refill, check, clear, replace and so on. It also helps to think about what you want to say before you start speaking. As always, be aware of the volume of your voice. Speak only loud enough for your colleague to hear you. Let's talk about nonverbal communication. One of your greatest tools in providing efficient, yet silent service is nonverbal communication. That is, speaking without words. As you'll remember from previous lessons, this is done through body language. You can communicate a message in seconds through the tiniest movement of your eyes, head or hands. There are two important devices here. A eye contact and B hand signals. Through making eye contact with your colleagues you can focus their attention on a particular table or guest or ask them for help from across the room in a subtle way without making a sound. Secondly, hand signals are a word. The hand signals at your establishment could be different and at some establishments may be quite advanced. For example, different signals to show which type of water the guest prefers. You can decide as a team which hand signals will be used and what they mean. The important thing is that everyone knows them and that they are subtle. No waving about of your arms. They should also never be done while a guest can see you. They might think you're talking about them. With both eye contact and hand signals, there is one key point which determines whether they are effective. What do you think that is? Everyone on the team needs to be on the lookout for them. You can make eye contact and hand signals until you're blue in the face. But if your colleagues aren't alert, they will have no effect. So this is another situation where teamwork can make or break successful service. Lastly, let's go through communicating with the kitchen. The pass is another pressure point where communication is vital. It doesn't help for the guest to make a request to a waiter, only for the kitchen to never hear about it. As you know, a kitchen is a high stress environment and the chef has a lot to focus on. So if you need to talk to them, keep it short, sharp and concise and do it through the pass manager where possible. You don't want to come into the kitchen making a noise and distracting everybody who is hard at work and concentrating. So only talk in the kitchen if it is absolutely necessary. It is also crucial in the kitchen to address the person you are talking to so that they know you are talking to them. For example, Chef, Table 3 sends its compliments for the delicious meal. So, the main points to remember when communicating with colleagues during service are verbal communication should be short and to the point. Non-verbal communication is your best friend when it comes to efficient service. And <laughs>